So I'm presenting this on behalf of uh, the Military Families Learning Network, uh, of which I'm a part. I'm associated with the Network Literacy Community of Practice, and I'll talk about that a little bit more as, as we go on. The goal of the Military Families Learning Network is to provide research and evidence-based professional development to primarily to folks associated with the Department of Defense that are working with military families on base or out in the communities where they live. Um, if you're interested in learning more about that, getting involved with it, I'd encourage you to go to the extension.org site, extension.org slash military families, and you can uh, get a good overview of everything that we're doing and um, and how you can become a part of it if you're interested in, in helping out in that regard. So I'm going to start out here with a poll. And so I'm going to ask that you um, look up in the, um, just probably just beneath your name in the participant section, there's a little drop down that will allow you to choose A, B, C, D, or none. And I'm curious for the folks on this call, how long have you been using Facebook? So your choices are basically you don't use it, less than a year, one or two years, or more than two years. And I'll give everyone a chance to enter in there. And so far, I can tell you it looks like you're all experienced. So maybe you'll be able to teach me something today instead of me teaching you. All right, so it looks like uh, of the people who responded, uh, everyone said that they had been using Facebook for uh, more than two years. So like I said, as we go along, I would encourage you to share uh, your experiences. And if I say something that's wrong, please jump in and correct me. As I said, I'm the chair of the Network Literacy Community of Practice. We're a part of the Military Families Learning Network. Um, if you're interested in finding out more about us, you can go to the same extension.org site. This time, if you append network underscore literacy to the end of the URL, you'll get to our page that will link you to all the places we live on the web, which would be there, uh, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Google+, all over. People often ask me, what does network literacy do? And so we've come up with sort of a, as brief an explanation as we can uh, develop that we think is still clear. So really what we're about is helping people to become better learners and teachers through the use of online networks. So working with military family service professionals and extension professionals uh, is a large part of what we do. And it's all about how online networks can uh, make that a little bit easier and enhance the way we do those things. So if you have any interest in that, I'd ask you please seek us out. So at this point, I'm going to shut off my video because I don't think you guys really need to see me speaking as I go through here. Um, and it'll get a little bit disconcerting when I'm looking at my other screen when I'm doing the Facebook walkthrough. So I'm going to shut off my video. But I wanted to let you know that I am a real person and I am here. Now, as we go through, I'm one of those people who prefers that you don't wait until the end of the presentation. If you have questions or comments, that you can just sort of hop in and ask a question. So you can ask a question in the chat area just by typing in there. That would be fine. Uh, if you uh, prefer, you can speak by clicking on the talk button that's in the audio and video pod, and that will activate your microphone. If you want to do that, I'd suggest uh, you might want to go through the audio setup wizard to make sure it's working right. Uh, that's also in the audio and video pod. It's, it looks like a microphone with a red asterisk on top of it. Um, if you're having problems doing that, you can also, if you're watching on the Ustream stream, if Anne's been able to get that going, you can also tweet your questions uh, with the hashtag netlit 
and uh, we'll try and check on that and answer those questions as well if, as we get the chance. Um, so if there aren't any further questions, I'd like to progress. So f when I start talking about privacy settings, um, it sometimes concerns me what we really mean by privacy. Because in some regards, the only things that are private are the things that you keep to yourself. Uh, so the thoughts in your head and the things that are not shared with anyone else are private. Um, but as soon as you decide to share something on social media, whether that's Facebook or, an, or another uh, social media platform, they're no longer private. You're sharing it with someone. And so really when we talk about the privacy settings, we're talking about how are the things that you share going to be shared by others? Who's going to be able to see that? Who's going to be able to share it? And is, does that match with the expectations you had when you originally shared the content itself? So I'd just like you to keep that in mind as we go through. And while we're going to focus on Facebook today, and uh, we're going to kind of take a deep dive into the Facebook privacy settings. I would tell you that most social networks have some degree of uh, control over who can see the information that you share. And so I'd encourage you um, to also look at any other social networks that you use. So as I mentioned, each platform kind of has its default settings. Um, Obviously, Facebook, it's in Facebook's best interest for you to share a lot of information because that's why people go to Facebook, is to see the other information that, that they have to share. Um, so they're going to set defaults that will encourage your sharing. Now, what I've seen from my own uh, opinion over the years is that Facebook is realizing that that doesn't mean to make the defaults everything is public, because then people are less likely to share. So it seems in recent years that Facebook has been setting defaults that um, are somewhat public, um, but that are designed to give you a little bit of peace of mind so that you feel comfortable sharing what you want to do. So it's really up to you to take a look at those defaults and decide which ones are right for you. There's nothing, uh, I'm not going to say anything today which will tell you this is the right way to set your privacy settings or the wrong way. It's really dependent on what you're trying to accomplish and what your comfort level is with the information being shared. So. I will go through. You can, you'll be able to see the way I have my settings set. Um, I probably tend to be a little bit more public than a lot of people, um, but I, because I've gone through the settings, I understand that, and it will uh, help influence what I decide to share when I'm on Facebook. It was interesting that after I. Uh, had decided to do this webinar and had published the description that Facebook rolled out about a week later what it calls its privacy checkup. And so f since most of you seem to use Facebook or have been using it for a while, you may have noticed that when you came to Facebook that they even had a pop-up that asked you to go through the privacy checkup. I would encourage everyone to do that, but I will also tell you that it's not complete. And so what we're going to focus on today is not so much just the stuff that you can adjust within the privacy checkup, but some of the more detailed controls that you can have if you choose to do that. But at a minimum, I would encourage everyone to go through the privacy checkup so that they get an idea of what they're sharing, who can see what they're sharing, and who can you know, reach out and friend you or, or contact you. So when we talk, I'm going to go through a few slides just because I like to sort of give everything a little bit of context and then we're going to jump into really the, the meat and potatoes where we're going to go through my Facebook privacy settings and some other settings and show you uh, and talk about what those different settings do. Uh, here I just took a screenshot of the uh, privacy settings. If you are on the privacy checkup, 
and you click on see more settings. So this, uh, the, you'll, you'll see that down here. Um, let's see, I can probably highlight that. Where it says see more settings. Um, you'll get to a page which is over here, which has the actual um, detailed settings. And I highlighted a few that we're going to talk about today. Um, one of the things that you'll notice is that they're not all in one central place. So if you really want to take a look at your privacy settings, you're going to have to go to a number of different pages to uh, have a real sense of, of what's going on. So we're going to go through those today. The other place that we can take a look at uh, that's in a different location is just the privacy of the different uh, items on your Facebook profile. So really, for almost every piece of information that's on your Facebook profile, you're able to control who's able to see that piece of information. So you may not want people to be able to see that it's your birthday, or you may not want to see have them see your uh, religious views or political views or where you live or what your email address is. So all of those are customizable on an item by item basis within your Facebook profile. So it's just one more place that you may want to go and check and see what you're, uh, what you're actually sharing. So I would ask now uh, for folks to indicate with a poll device, again, there should be a little yes, no box there. Have you ever adjusted your Facebook privacy settings? I'll give everyone a chance to respond if they want to, and then we'll So it looks like, I'm going to keep moving on here, that uh, pretty much everyone that's responded anyway has adjusted their Facebook setting, privacy settings at some point or another. Um, so maybe that means I'm preaching to the choir today and everyone's going to leave here very bored because they've already gone through all of this, but hopefully you'll get something out of it. And as I said before, please do share uh, either through audio or in the chat pod if you would, uh, you know, if I get something wrong or if you think there's something that needs to be highlighted that I fail to highlight. So it's important as we get into the settings to discuss a couple of uh, sort of jargony terms that Facebook uses so that we have an understanding of what they are. So the first one I want to talk about is an acquaintance. And so you will see in your settings and when you go to uh, share a post um, through Facebook that one of the options is to share with your friends except acquaintances. And so acquaintances is a list that you can set up in Facebook, uh, and it's a kind of a special list. And if you put people into your acquaintance list after you friend them, then it um, has a few effects. One is you usually won't see what they post. So if they post something on Facebook, it's very unlikely to show up in your news feed. Um, you also then have the ability when you're posting something to say post to friends except acquaintances and then those people who you indicate are your acquaintances won't see the post. Um, and there are a couple other components of that um, that, that you can find out about if you go to that uh, Facebook help page. Um, and these slides are all, uh, I've already posted them to the Learn site. Uh, through a SlideShare link. So the, the slides are up on SlideShare if anybody wants to look at these after the fact and go pursue a little bit further. Another term that used to be much more prevalent but uh, Facebook is using a little bit less is what's called friends of friends. And so the way to think about this is uh, if you have uh, 200 friends on Facebook and each of them has 200 friends, and you share with your friends of friends, that means you're sharing not only with the 200 friends, 
life that you have, but also with all of the friends that they have. And so it can multiply rapidly. So it's sort of a level of sharing that goes beyond just sharing with your friends, but not as far as sharing with the public. This used to be pretty prominent when you went to share uh, a post on Facebook, but they've really sort of moved it down the list. So in order to even see it, you need to go into when you go to share a post. And we can I can show you how this works a little bit later. Um, you have to go into custom and then select from there. So it's just a little bit uh, different way of, of sharing. But you may see that come up, and it's important to understand what that means. And then the other thing is what's called a friends list. and um, this is a way for you to organize uh, the friends that you have in Facebook. And so you can organize around interest, around where you work, uh, around how close they are to you, uh, whether they're family or not, all sorts of things. And what that enables you to do is when you create a post to share on Facebook, you can say, I only want to share this post with my family, for example. Or you can, when you're setting up your privacy settings, you can decide that you only want your family to be able to see your birthday, but you don't want everyone else to be able to see your birthday. So I'll probably show you some of these lists, but you should just know that they're there, and that's what populates the drop-down boxes when you're going into to set your privacy settings or when you're going to share a post. All right, so let's actually walk through this and see what we can do. All right, are, are folks seeing my uh, screen right now? Should be able to see uh, Facebook. I've got it sort of blown up as best I can, uh, but if you're If you're having problems seeing it, let me know. That's about as big as I can probably get it on this monitor. So the key thing to know if we're talking about privacy settings is up in the upper right of the uh, sort of blue heading bar on Facebook is a little lock with three lines. And when I click on that, I see privacy shortcuts. And the first thing is the privacy checkup. And as I mentioned, this is where you can actually go through and uh, I think they walk through maybe three or four screens where you can adjust some privacy settings. I'm going to kind of skip over that because we'll see a lot of those same settings just in a more individual format. But this is something that, uh, you know, would be good practice for anyone to do. Um, if you really want to get in deeper, that's what I'm going to talk to you about and also give you an opportunity to, to sort of understand what all those settings are. But this is the kind of thing that I would suggest to my mom or my wife. You know, you may just want to go through that privacy checkup and make sure that the settings are what you thought they were. So if we come down to where it says see more settings and click on that, now we're going to get into the actual uh, privacy settings. and. Facebook sort of limits that to these settings that you can see here. Uh, when I talk about the privacy settings, I'm going to show you a few other areas over here on the left that I think are equally important for you to take a look at. So easy one, who can see your future posts? Right now I have mine set to public. So that means when I post something to Facebook, it's public. Anybody can see it. But that's just the default setting. So I can actually change that each time I post. But if, if normally I use Facebook uh, just to talk with my friends, um, I may want to change it so that my default setting is to only share with my friends. OK? If I wanted to do something more, and I'm going to sort of focus on this for just a minute so you can, you can see it, um, because this is the same sort of selection options that we're going to have in a, in a variety of different places. So we have public and we have friends. Those are sort of the big two that Facebook promotes. 
we talked a little bit about this friends except acquaintances. And so as I mentioned, this is everybody that you're friends with on Facebook except the people that you've added to your acquaintances list. So for example, if your plumber friends you on Facebook uh, and you're, you know, you sort of feel weird, but you say, well, I'll accept his friend request or her friend request, but you know what, I really don't want to see what they're posting and I don't want to share it with everything that I do with them, you would add them to your acquaintances list. Um, Sonia's asking why I would want to share with only me. <laughs> um, and you can use, it. people have a variety of different uses for Facebook. So maybe you want to um, use the timeline feature within Facebook to keep track of things that, that have happened in your life, but they're not necessarily things that you want to share with anyone else. So maybe you're, uh, I don't know, maybe you're on a weight loss journey and you're trying to get in shape and you decide you're going to put uh, pictures of you and your weight on Facebook and you're going to say those are only visible to me, meaning you, the person posting it. Um, yeah, like a diary. Personally, I would not do that because I'd be afraid that I would forget to use only me and I would make it public and then it might be embarrassing. So I would probably not put that stuff on Facebook to begin with, but again, there are different ways of using it. I know Kevin Gamble once talked about using some a technique similar to that in uh, Google Plus where he would bookmark, use it as a way to bookmark things. So yeah. And Amy, thanks for helping out there in the chat. Um, the custom setting is a way that you can come in and you can share and you can be specific about friends or lists. Now what you'll notice is that when I click in here, it defaults to give me that friends of friends option. So again, this is one of those areas where I said, you know, Facebook seems to be burying this a little bit deeper. It used to be one of the drop down choices. Now you would need to come in and say, I want to share with my friends and my friends of friends. Um, and that's going to allow, uh, that's going to let not just your friends, but their friends see a post. Um, if you say friends of tagged, okay, if, if any of you are used to sharing photos in Facebook, you can tag people within Facebook. Uh, those people may or may not be your friends. Again, that depends on their privacy settings, whether you're even allowed to tag them. We'll talk about that. Um, and so you can say that also if I tag someone in a post or in a picture, that I also want their friends to be able to see it. Or you can uncheck that. And then you can also, once I've done all of this, I can then come in here and say, that's all well and good, but I don't want anything shared with Amy Hayes because I don't want her to know what I'm doing, okay? And so this would basically set up my default to say I'm sharing to my friends, my friends of friends, anybody I tag, anybody who's their friend, but not Amy, okay? So I'm sorry, Amy, I'll take you out of there because I, I don't feel that way. So you can also choose from your particular list. So you may have like this family list. And the reason I have two, you probably don't have two, is one is sort of an automatic list that Facebook uh, started rolling out, uh, I think a couple of years ago, but prior to that I had set up my own family list. This is now a, a sort of a special list that they have and when you add someone to your special family list, they get a message that says you added them to your family list and uh, would they like to add you to their family list. So the, they're recognizing that when you say someone's in your family, likely they think you're in their family as well. So I can adjust any of these settings. So I'm going to change mine to friends so that the next time I go to post something, it's going to go just to my friends. So just to show you what that looks like, I come over here 
and when I click on what's on your mind, you'll notice that this defaults to my friends. So that's the only thing we really changed. I still have the ability on a post-by-post -post basis to come in and do the same exact thing and adjust who it is I'm sharing uh, this particular post with. So the only thing that we were doing in that case was adjusting the default. And then come back over. You can see the default is friends. Um, there's a couple other options. If you've shared things in the past and now you want to limit how those are, were shared, you know, so this was sort of a uh, catch-up card, if you will. If you've never bothered with your Facebook privacy settings and you realize, oh my gosh, I've been sharing everything publicly and that's not really what I want, you can go in and limit your past posts. A couple other things on here. Who can contact me? So uh, you probably all have gotten friend requests since you all use Facebook. Um, and you can decide who's actually able to request to be your friend. So you have the choice between everyone. Right? So everyone can ask to be your friend. And I would call that anyone. Um, or you can say only allow friends of friends to request to be my friend. So it's just a way of filtering it down and saying, you know what, I don't want everyone in the world to be able to make a friend request of me, but if they're already friends with someone that I'm friends with, that's probably okay. Um, again, what you choose to use there gives you, you know, is going to be based on how you're deciding to use Facebook and, you know, whether you're trying to reach out to a, a larger network of people or if you're really just trying to connect with, uh, with a small circle of folks. Uh, same thing with the inbox. You can, um, you can decide what shows up in your inbox. I really don't use the, the Facebook inbox very much. Uh, it's more for messaging, and so, so I don't do that very much. Who can look you up? Um, this is similar to up here who can send you friend requ requests, but um, you can decide whether someone can look you up based on your email address. So this would be the e any email address that Facebook knows about. Um, it doesn't mean that they're sharing your email address or your phone number with those people. But when uh, you may have seen the find friends feature and you can, you know, it'll suggest people that you may already know and you can upload your uh, email address book. Um, it uses that to match in the background to show people people that they may already know. The other thing that you can control is whether search engines are able to link to your timeline or not. And so again, this would be only for posts that you made public, but you can decide, um, you know, do you want search engines to be able to see the timeline? Yes or no. So this is just a Boolean choice between yes and no. I consider these fairly basic um, options, and then what I, we're going to talk about here are maybe a few of the options that you don't necessarily get exposed to through the um, privacy checkup, and those are hidden in these other sections. So let's talk about those for a minute. While it's not exactly privacy related, I'm going to highlight uh, the security options here. Um, one of the things that you can do is you can control how someone would be able to log into your Facebook account from a browser that they have never logged in from before. So presumably this is you um, would be logging in. And the idea is you're typically using the same one or two browsers um, and you're logging into Facebook. And if you lost your Facebook credentials, your username and password, and someone in China or New Hampshire happened to get those and decide to hack into your Facebook account and they go to log in, you can adjust your settings such that they will not be able to log in simply by having your username and password. They, you can set it so that you have to receive a text message on your phone. Um, you can set it so that if you use the Facebook app on your phone, that you have a, the, what's called a code generator, uh, that you'll, when you go to log in from a browser that you've never logged in before, you'll actually get a notifi notification on your phone that says, oh, you need to use the code generator. Pull it up, 
type in a six digit code and it'll let you in and you can save that browser so you only ever have to do that once really. Um, so that's something, that, again, it's not necessarily privacy related except to the extent that if someone has your username and password and you have no other security in place, then they would able, be able to go into your Facebook account, see everything that you're able to see, post as you, and do other things. So it, it's something that may be worth uh, considering turning that on for yourself. You can also take a look at where you're currently logged into Facebook. Um, and so I can see that right now I'm logged in on Firefox on Windows. That's the one you're looking at. I have Chrome on Windows, uh, IE on Windows, and Facebook for Android. Okay, so just different places I'm logged in. So if you wonder something's going on with Facebook and, you know, something's happening, this is a good place to look where you logged in. <laughs> and if you see that you're logged in from... Uh, from my house and you're not at my house, you may want to uh, log that session out and change your password. All right, another section here is called timeline and tagging. Um, as I mentioned, if you have questions or comments as we go through here, I would encourage you to please, uh, please ask. And if you have questions and I don't see them pop up, probably there's someone else in the chat room who can answer them before I get a chance to look at them. When we had that first poll question, a lot of people mentioned that uh, they had been using Facebook for, I think I, the maximum I said was more, more than two years. So how many people think of, the, of Facebook as the wall? You think of your Facebook wall. You can use the yes, no uh, polling if you want. Um, because originally when Facebook first started, that's really what they, the terminology that they used was people posting on your wall and you posting on other people's walls. And now they've really settled much more on the timeline kind of terminology. So if you see timeline in places, that's really what they're talking about is each person, each individual has a timeline. So if I go to me to where and click on my name, I see my timeline. So these are things that I have posted or people have posted on my timeline. So you can control who is allowed to post on your timeline. So you're able to, again, with very similar settings, you know, these are, you're going to see these choices a lot. Um, but depending on the particular setting that we're looking at, it may be a smaller subset. So who can post on your timeline? Do you allow your friends to post on it or only you? So if you, you know, don't want people putting posts onto your timeline, you just say only I can post to my timeline. They can still mention you in posts and, and they, can, uh, they can do that, but they wouldn't be able to actually post on the timeline. Um, reviewing tags before you appear, before they appear on your timeline. So again, if someone tagged you in a post uh, and it was going to show up on your timeline, you can decide whether you want to review that before it's allowed to show up on your timeline or not. If you wanted to take a look and see, you know what, I wonder what I wonder what my mom sees when she goes and looks at my timeline, or I wonder what my boss sees when he goes and or she goes and looks at my timeline. You can actually come in and do this view as, right, and I can choose to view this is what my timeline looks like to the public, or I can choose a specific person. So if I go to view a, a specific person and I want to see what this looks like when my mother looks at it, to make sure there's no, uh, you know, nothing on there that I don't want her to see. I'm like, okay, that looks pretty good, right? But I could choose my boss, and it may may show up differently depending on who that is. So one thing you may want to do is after you get all of your privacy settings where you think you want them, is just going and taking a look at what your uh, timeline looks like to, to other folks.
and there's more settings here for uh, for tagging. So if I upload a picture to Facebook, it's going to look at the picture and suggest people to be tagged in that photo. So you can control whether you will be suggested to other people. If they upload a photo of you, will they be able to, will that just pop up as a um, as an option, let's say, for them to tag you in that photo? They could still tag you, they just wouldn't see it as a suggestion. Um, and you can also adjust whether they can automatically tag you or whether you need to review that before the tag goes public. Um, blocking is another section here. This is, um, you can actually create a list of people who are on your restricted list. Um, and that basically lets them see things that you say are public, um, but they aren't able to see things that you share just with your friends. However, they don't get notified, so it's not the same as unfriending someone. And similarly, um, you know, the other thing you can do is when you're on a post, when you're looking at an actual uh, post that someone else has made, you can unfollow a person. And so in Facebook parlance, they used to call this hide. Um, however, you're, they're, now they're calling it unfollow. So you're still friends with that person, you just won't necessarily see what they post on a regular basis. You can also block someone. So if you're kind of, uh, you know, you just don't want someone to be able to see anything about you or, you know, talk to you or anything else, you can, you can block that person by adding them, again, by name or email. You can block invitations to apps. So I don't know how many, I don't know if anyone still plays Farmville or not. I know people used to do that and I'd get all kinds of invites for that. Um, you can actually block invites from particular people. So this is different. You're blocking from a particular person. If I come down here under block apps, I can say I don't want to get um, any information about Cityville links, birthdays, birthday calendar by Davia or Hidden Chronicles. And, you know, you are able to choose that. And you can do that from an individual post. So if you see a post from someone who's, you know, really getting very good at Candy Crush and you don't really care to see those, you can block that kind of post as well. Um, and then you can also block pages. So blocking provides you with a way of sort of if you have things that are showing up in your news feed and you just really don't want to see them, you want to get rid of them or people that you don't want to interact with um, but you don't necessarily want to unfriend them, uh, you can get rid of them. And when you block someone, I, I'm even if they're a friend of a friend and would otherwise have ability to see it. Um, so even though they're, like if you unfriend someone, that doesn't necessarily block them because they could be a friend of a friend. Okay. Um, notifications, again, not maybe not a privacy issue so much as for some people in, it's an annoyance issue on Facebook so you are able to control how much you get notified about. So on Facebook, via email, um, and via push notifications if you're using uh, the Facebook app on your phone or tablet. So you're able to control these and sort of get rid of, um, you know, this sort of thing. So do I want to get notified about uh, activity I may have missed? Well, maybe not. Maybe I just want to see, yeah, and they'll warn you, right? That's nice of them to warn me that I'm going to miss out on emails about photos you're tagged in, blah, blah, blah. Um, but maybe all I want is information about my account security and privacy. And particularly if you use Facebook a lot, um, maybe you don't care to get an email in addition to seeing it in Facebook. So that's one way to, to manage that. Um, and you can get rid of, you know, notifications about a variety of different things. And I'll let you go through all these, but you can see that there are a variety of things that you can decide whether you get notified about or not. I want to go into the followers section. Um, Again, who can follow you, or um, you can decide. Now, followers is a little bit uh, 
different than friends, right? So I can actually, this would be kind of if you're a famous person um, or you think that you're of general interest and you think there are people who might want to follow what you post or see what you post, but you don't necessarily want to see everything that they post. So if you're, uh, you know, Hillary Clinton and you have a Facebook profile, uh, you may not want to be friends with everyone who wants to see what you have to say on Facebook. Um, so you can actually set it up so that you can allow other people to follow you on Facebook, but that is a different concept than friends. All right. And so I'd encourage you, if that's something that you feel you would like to do, or there are people that you work with that, that may, you know, that they're a public intellectual or a public figure and may want to do that, I'd encourage you to go and read more about what exactly following means in the, um, in the Facebook world. And a couple more places I want to show you here. Um, under apps, you're able to see kind of what apps you have logged in with Facebook on um, and what information is available through those apps or who it's shared with. So I can actually go into say something like, uh, let me find one here, Pandora, right? So at some point I've been on Pandora and what am I allowed, you know, who can who can see that I use this app on Facebook, I can actually change who's able to see that I have the Pandora app installed, uh, whether the app can send me notifications, um, all, of, all of that uh, type of information. I can also remove the app if I decide, you know what, I signed up for that a long time ago, but it's not even an app I use anymore and I don't know whether they're still getting information from me somehow, I can go in and actually remove the app and you can do the same thing with the X here and just click out. So I'm going to remove Pandora. Sure, I don't think I use Pandora very much, so we'll go ahead and do that. And so that's going to remove Pandora from the list of apps that I have uh, authenticated with Facebook and that will work for, that potentially have information to share with other Facebook users through their app. And there's some other settings here. One that I want to talk about in particular is instant personalization. So you may notice that when you're, this is not something that goes on necessarily on Facebook itself. Um, this goes on in other places. And what will happen is when you go to that site, it'll automatically know who you are and it may uh, show you, oh, your friend was here and, you know, I guess I'm Bing, I don't even know, maybe it shows you what they search for, I doubt it, but, you know, we'll show you, oh, your friends use this. So a lot of this is games, um, but you can actually turn that off, so I have that disabled for, for myself as well. Um, same thing for apps others use is another important setting, I think, and this is, um, what type of information from my Facebook profile, if they're able to see, can they bring into an app that they are using? It's very complicated. Um, but if you think about it, if, if Ann Adrian is using an app that links into Facebook and it's able to see all of her Facebook friends and Ann, I don't even know, but let's say Ann is my friend on Facebook, um, this information that's checked would be visible to uh, that application because they know who Ann is. So I can control, you know, who's able to see that information or what, which pieces of information it's, I'm allowing to share. All right. Now, the one that has some uh, real well, I won't say real privacy implications, but, but I know concern a number of people are the uh, association of Facebook with advertising. Um, 
there are a couple things in here. The third party sites I'm probably not going to go through in the interest of time because it's really a setting that has no effect right now. But it's, uh, you know, maybe sometime in the future, Facebook will share information with these third party sites. You may want to just turn it off now so you don't have to worry about it if they change their settings later. But I would say ads and friends is a place that you can look. Has anyone ever? You can use the poll again if you want. Has anyone ever seen an ad on Facebook that says that one of their friends likes something? Right? They like Coca-Cola, or they like uh, you know In-N-Out Burger, or they like Microsoft, or God only knows what other things they may like. Um, you're actually able to turn that off for yourself so that you know, you'll still see these ads that say so and so liked something, but other people will not see an ad that says you liked it. Because one of the interesting things is you you will never see an ad, so Anne will never see an ad that says Anne Adrian likes Denver sushi, even if she does. Uh, but other people who see that ad may see that Anne Adrian likes it. So you can come in here and you can say. I don't want anyone to see my social actions paired up with an ad. Right? So it's something that I think you may want to do because you might not even be thinking about when you click like on a brand or on a page or someplace else, uh, you may not want that shared uh, with, all, with your friends. A more complicated one is this ads based on your use of websites or apps off of Facebook. Um, so one of the things, and again, I'm going to ask you in the polling area, I'll clear out that one, I'm going to ask you, have you ever seen an ad while you're in Facebook for something that you were looking at on another website? So if you were uh, looking for a graduation present for someone, and then all of a sudden when you went into Facebook, you saw an ad for a product that was eerily similar to what you were looking at on another site. Um, and the reason for that is that uh, there, the, when you are logged into Facebook, you have a little token on your computer that um, lets Facebook know who you are. That's why you don't necessarily have to log in to Facebook every time you return to it, um, or that it, it even before you log in, it knows who you are. Well, that is also shared with some other sites with these what are called third-party sites. Um, and they are then able to feed that information that information goes back to Facebook so they know, Facebook knows that you're on that site. And then the advertiser says, hey, you know, if there was anybody who was looking at our products, next time they show up on Facebook, would you please present them with this ad and we'll give you three cents. And um, that's how those ads show up. So you're actually able to control that, although not through Facebook itself. You need to go to this Digital Advertising Alliance um, and you need to opt out of that third-party advertising there. You can do it for Facebook and a no number of other services, including, I think, uh, I'm not sure if Twitter's there. I think Google's there. There are a few others that are there. Um, you're actually able to opt out. The only caveat being, and this is all explained here if you want to read it, um, the caveat is that that opt-out is on a browser-by-browser -browser basis and goes away if you clear your cookies. So uh, again, cookies are these little digital uh, files that are passed back and forth between your browser and a website. Interestingly, you need to have an extra cookie to tell them not to read your other cookies <laughs> so they can advertise to you. Um, so if you clear the cookies in your browser, um, you're no longer opting out. And if you use a different browser, each browser uses different cookies. So they, uh, you need to, if you use both Firefox and Chrome, or you use it on multiple computers, or you use it on you know, a browser on your phone, you would have to go in and actually uh, change that in all of those places. All right, that is a semi-in-depth overview of all of the privacy settings that you have within Facebook. Um, and so 
I would certainly welcome any questions that folks have. I would like to ask one more polling question and ask that after attending this webinar, do you intend to adjust your Facebook privacy settings? Or are you at a point where you think they were just right before you showed up? And Anne, instead of paying attention to me talking, has already been adjusting her settings. See, all you guys, when you could have been listening to me, you were adjusting your settings. I appreciate that. I, I like multitasking. So I will just, uh, let me ask a question. Um, and you can just put this in the uh, chat pod, or you can talk if you want. And this is just because I'm not, I'm honestly not sure of this. Are you able to see the poll count below the poll uh, when you select yes or no? Are you able to see the poll count? Because I do have the ability to actually show that on the whiteboard, but I'm not sure whether you can see it without me doing that. OK, good, good. Um, and Sarah's asking, are the settings same for different types of pages, like group pages? Um, so I guess I would say I would not call something a group page, because the, that, um, that it sort of mixes two things. There's a, the Facebook a page, which an organization would have. So for example, Network Literacy has a Facebook page. Um, pages don't really have friends. Um, they have people who have liked the page or chosen to follow them. Um, and they can like other pages. But they, it, the, it's a very different scenario. So you don't have that. that those sorts of settings associated with a page. A group um, is, is different in that instead of being established by one person and having only like three people, they're able to post as the page, and, and pages are generally public. The groups, you're able to sort of have private groups, membership-only groups, um, some differences in there. So yes, the settings will be different. Um, and what we were looking at are things for your uh, personal profile. Yeah, and thanks. That searching for photos liked by that was one of those things that when uh, Facebook added this uh, sort of a uh, social graph searching capability, where you could start doing searches for you know photos liked by and use someone's Facebook name, and then you would see all of the photos that they liked. And um, you know, again, that's just one of those areas where you may, when you like a photo, you may have intended to let the person who posted the photo know, hey, I like that. It's kind of neat. Um, you may not have intended to let anyone in the world be able to search and find out that you like that photo. So um, I think that really speaks to what I think of when I think of privacy, which is not so much don't share anything, but understand um, what it is you're sharing and who you're sharing it with. And so to the degree that you can adjust your settings to control that and have it match your expectations, I think, I think we're going to be much better off. So I would like to thank everyone. I can hang out here for a little bit longer if people have specific questions or, or anything else. Um, I will tell you that we, the Network Literacy COP does have a Facebook page. Uh, you can go there. Oftentimes, we will post a when things change on Facebook, and you may want to take a look at your settings. Um, the Learn event, is, uh, which is probably how you got in here, if you can make sure that you marked in that that you attended. Uh, if you want to comment on that page to ask any questions, you're more than welcome to do that. I also linked there on that Learn page to the slide share, which has the full presentation. You can download it. You can adopt it, do whatever you want to it, uh, feel free to, to take that. Um, if you have any questions and you happen to use Twitter, uh, if you use the hashtag netlit, uh, folks will be able to see that. 
Um, or if you want to email me directly, you're welcome to do that. Pretty much any way you can get in touch with me, uh, I don't mind answering questions or, or providing more information where I'm able to. Uh, I'd encourage you to do it through something like Twitter with the netlit hashtag or asking on our network literacy page because then other people can learn from that as well. Um, the session it was recorded um, and it will be posted um, and linked to from that learn page as well. So once that recording is is posted in an accessible area, we'll update that um, page so that you'll be able to get to the recording. So with that, I am going to stop the recording. Um, but like I said, if you want to hang out and ask some additional questions, you're more than welcome to.